Hello Miramar, I'm Mayor Wayne Messam and welcome to the Mayor's Corner. Wow, I can't believe that this is the first Mayor's Corner of the calendar year of 2022. I missed you all, so let's get right to the announcements. As the mayor of the great city of Miramar, one of my duties is to be an ambassador for our city advocating for legislative priorities in Washington, D.C. and in our state's capital, Tallahassee. Since my last update, I have gone to both Washington and Tallahassee twice on behalf of the great city of Miramar. The purpose of those visits were to lobby Washington and Tallahassee for our funding priorities, which include our infrastructure and utility projects in the city of Miramar as well as getting brief on how Miramar can best position ourselves for direct grant funding as a result of the $1.6 trillion from the Jobs and Infrastructure Act that was recently passed by Congress and later signed by President Joe Biden. I would like to thank the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the Florida League of Cities, and the Florida League of Mayors, in which I serve as the president-elect, for their support of our advocacy and legislative needs. Miramar is February. And in February, we recognize and pause along with our nation to celebrate and honor the contributions of African Americans during Black History Month. In the city of Miramar, we have many events planned for the month of February to recognize the contributions of African Americans and to teach a little history throughout the month. I have the honor of being our city's host on behalf of the city of Miramar. And let's recap some of the events that have already taken place as well as those yet to come. We kicked off Black History Month by bringing together our clergy community for an interfaith luncheon that we held at the Miramar Cultural Center. It was well attended and we had an opportunity to hear a dynamic speech from Pastor Wayne Lomax from the Fountain Church. I'm honored to be able to bring together our members of the clergy because they serve such a vital component to our city and providing resources that are so desperately needed, especially for our families in the time of need and special times during our families. We wanted just to pass uh, just a little token of thank you to our clergy community. Last week, we had the pleasure of hosting cocktails and conversations for our young adult community to talk about black history, as well as to get a chance to network and have some fun. There was dancing, a excellent panel discussion talking about issues of blackness for young uh, black professionals in the city of Miramar at the Miramar Cultural Center. And it was a dynamic, robust discussion. And we look forward to building upon that series to continue the dialogue and the engagement. As many of us paused on Sunday to watch this big game, the Super Bowl, between the Cincinnati Bengals and the LA Rams, I hosted the Divine Nine Super Bowl party. So what is the Divine Nine? The Divine Nine is a collection of black fraternities and sororities that are all across the country and have local chapters here in the city of Miramar. They provide a wealth of community service, mentorship, and business support for our community. So we decided to have a Super Bowl watch party to honor their contributions to our community and especially as they relate to black history. Many of their members over the years have played such key roles in historical events and civil rights action in the United States. And I'm a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, which was the first collegiate fraternity founded for African Americans at Cornell University. But all of our organizations do so much for our community, and we're thankful for all of the organizations for coming out. One event still to come is the Black History Month Business Recognition Awards. We have six honorees this year, and our keynote speaker will be Carnival Corporation President and CEO Arnold Donnell, who will be our featured keynote speaker. We're really looking forward to his message to our local black businesses that we will recognize because we know that not only will it be dynamic, but it will be a challenge and a charge for our awardees. And we're so glad that Arnold Donnell is able to participate. So as I close out this announcement regarding Black History Month, I would like to remind our community that we can never take for granted the contributions of African Americans in this country. Every civil rights advancement in this country 
benefits us all. So if you're an immigrant or you are first generation American that may not necessarily be from the African diaspora, um, like our American descendants of slave, United States, the way that we are today and the civil liberties that we have, were not always the case. It was because of the actions taken place by the American descendants of slaves in the civil right era to win the many battles of injustices and just barbaric activities that took place, not since just slavery, but from Jim Crow era. And even today, that battle still continues on. So we would like to thank everyone from the civil rights era, everyone who fought for the emancipation of slaves, as well as all of the friends of the struggle for ensuring that equality exists. And that is why we celebrate black history not only in the United States, but in the city of Myanmar. Our next announcement is to announce the continuation of yoga, A Time to Heal. It continues every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Miramar Town Center. It's absolutely free, and wow, we have built such a community of yogis who enjoy every Saturday, led by no other than Rocky Rowland, our dynamic yoga instructor. So we look forward to celebrating with you as we continue our Black History theme for yoga during this month. So make sure to come out. You won't be disappointed. So whether you're a yogi or you are an inspiring yogi, we can get you started with yoga, a time to heal. So we'll see you on Saturday right here at Miramar Town Center at 10 a.m. every Saturday. I'm pleased to announce the fourth annual Mayor's Annual 5K Run Walk. This is one of my favorite events for the year that I sponsor. This event brings not only the running community, but we also introduce walking and running to our community at large in a very, very safe and fun-filled event. Uh, we will be observing COVID protocols for these races, but we are so excited to be able to come out for this competitively timed race. We have some amazing sponsors as well as a very nice looking medallion for all of the participants in this year's 5K. Now make sure to register today at the link that's on the bottom of this screen to ensure that you can catch the early bird price of only $15 because at the end of February, the price goes up. So don't tarry, don't wait. Go ahead and register today and we look forward to seeing you at the Mayor's Annual 5K Run Walk. As we close out this edition of the Mayor's Corner, I would like to bring you up to speed on some of the priorities that I will be focused on over the next year. As you know, I'm always thinking about our infrastructure as well as what will Miramar look like five years, 10 years, 25 years from now, because there are some key decisions and key investments we have to do today. So some of the things I want you to contemplate on do you know by 2030 that 40% of the cars on the road will be electric vehicles? You may own one now or you may be thinking about it. So how will Miramar prepare for this? What will our infrastructure need to be and look like in terms of having EV charging stations throughout our city so that you can ensure that you have an ability to keep your cars charged? Also, as it relates to a changing and evolving economy, we have to ensure that we're partnering with our business sector to make sure that our infrastructure is intact as well as the workforce. So that is why we are contemplating and planning an innovation and technology village that will ensure that we have the right partnerships as it relates to workforce development, venture capital invest, investment, as well as incubator and spaces for, for problem solvers that are right here in our community. Miramar right now enjoys the most Fortune 500 companies in our city that either has a headquarters or a regional presence in the Tri-County area. And we need to make sure that we sustain that position. So we have to ensure that we are not only prepared, but we're thinking about as well as putting resources in place to remain in the top spot. I need you to partner with me and the Miramar City Commission as we contemplate these decisions. It's not always about, you know, the great fun that we have at our cultural events, but I want to make sure as the mayor that you as residents know that I am focused and I am surgically, you know, paying attention to these important issues because at the end of the day, 
We all want a city that's not only beautiful, we all want a city that's not only fun, but we want a city that is innovative on the cusp of what is next so that we can be sustainable, so that our city is well positioned for the next decade and decades to come. It's an honor to be your mayor, and as we are celebrating Black History Month, I do not take it for granted just the, the humble opportunity that I have to be our city's first black mayor. And I wish that I am serving, um, at representing you in the way that you expect me to lead as the mayor as we work together to make Miramar the best city in the country. Thank you, and that concludes this edition of the Mayor's Corner.